If your program works with a database, it has to connect to it and use SQL to get things from it or put things in it. Databases use tables to store data and these tables are associated with relations. The objects in your program are also associated with composition and aggregation. And although you find many entities in both the program and database, for technical reasons they are stored in a different way. So if you want a list of products, you have to write an SQL query to get the data from the database. Even if this is a flat list on the screen, the data might come from two tables, which requires an SQL join. Object Relational Mappers, or ORMs, can abstract the communication with the database away. They allow you to write Python code that is translated automatically by the ORM to SQL, which also allows to switch to another database without changing the database code in your program. One of the ORMs for Python is called SQL Alchemy and in this video you will learn how to use it to create a database, create tables, insert, read and delete data and how to create relationships. And all this without writing a single line of SQL. This is the database scheme but I'm going to start by just creating the employees table. I have pip installed SQL Alchemy. I've imported from SQL Alchemy and start by creating a base class for all the models. I'm going to show you in a minute why I did this. For now, just follow along with the code. I create an employee model that inherits from my base class. It has a primary key, name and salary. Now I create an engine and connect to a new SQLite database file. I create the database and execute the code. A database file was created. If SQLite is installed on your system, you can look into it with this command. With the schema command you can see the created table. Here you can also see how SQL Alchemy mapped Python types to SQLite types. Look again at the code. The employee class inherits from base, which in turn inherits from declarative base. In SQL Alchemy 2.0, this is the common pattern to construct mappings between objects and the database. Attributes can be annotated with type hints. This is actually very interesting because Reading the runtime generic type hints is still very much under development. Apparently SQL Alchemy trusts that things will keep working as they do currently. Which I hope so too by the way as I show in this video. The documentation says that CreateEngine creates a connection and might reuse old ones from the pool for efficiency. And finally, create all creates the tables. In the documentation, you can read that no existing tables will be overwritten. So I will leave this line in the code. And now I add the employees. For this, I am going to use a session. In the documentation, they refer to a session as a holding zone for objects. Once objects are added or removed from the session, the session needs to be committed to apply the changes to the database. Let me show you. I use a context manager to create a session. I import session. And add three employees one by one. I commit the changes and test the code. So, how do I check if that worked? I open the database with SQLite. I select all from employees. And that seemed to work. Now I will get the data with Python. I remove the adding of the employees. I get all employees. Iterate them and execute the code.
Very nice. Notice that I did not call commit this time as I was only reading from the database. You can read about this in the documentation. OK, there is one last thing I want to show you and that is how to create relationships in the database. For this I need to change the database scheme but since migrating data is not an easy task I will just delete the existing database file for this example. I create new model department. I create a foreign key relationship from employee to department. This adds a column to the employee table with a foreign key relationship to the department's table. But I'm not done yet. By default, SQLite does not check the foreign key relationship when inserting data in the employee table. I have to explicitly enable this. I get rid of the employee selection and enable foreign keys. I import foreign key and text. If I now insert an employee without having departments, I should get an error. And there it is. So I add two departments. And two more employees. Let's see if that works. No errors. Again, I open the database and look at the schema. The foreign key was created. But what would happen if I query the employees table? I would get the department IDs. So how do I get the department names? I add a department attribute with a relationship to the department class. I import relationship. This will retrieve a department object for each employee. I disable the data insertion and query the employees table again. Now I can access the department name via the department object like this. Let me see if that works. And there are the employees with their departments. Now, before you think that ORMs are a great solution when working with databases, I must also warn you for some pitfalls. First of all, using an ORM will not release you from understanding SQL. For this, you would only have to ask the opinion of a database administrator. Furthermore, an extra library in your project also imports extra complexity. But if you decide to add an ORM for your project, I'm going to give you one tip for which you will thank me later. In most of the projects I have worked on, when an ORM was used, the models were also used as entities in the project. And why not? This class looks like a clean data entity, doesn't it? No. This class actually has dependencies on the ORM. Here, here, and here. Once you start passing these objects through the layers in your app, every layer needs a hard-coded dependency to the ORM library. Does this web page really has anything to know about foreign keys in the database? I think not. So, when using an ORM, do yourself a favor and only use it to interact with the database. And how do you do that? Well, you are not going to like it. You have to create data classes for internal use and copy the data between them when loading and saving data to the database. Decoupling SQL Alchemy from your code prevents having such imports in parts of the code that have nothing to do with databases. And if you want to learn more about decoupling code, click on this video.